students to our sixth presentation on science and technology teaching in the foundation phase for LSK 3701. This is uh, your lecturer, Mrs. A. Karam, and you can email me on ecarrier1 at unisa.ac.za. Uh, today's presentation will be on learning unit five. So basically, this is all about digital technology. So on completion of this learning unit, you should be able to describe the terms of ICT, uh, the fourth industrial revolution and digital childhood, uh, and explain the concept of digital literacy and also differentiate between technology as a subject and digital technology. You also need to identify and assess a variety of technological resources for the early years and investigate the range of skills needed for the 21st century. Uh, this is where you also need to illustrate the use of the TPAC framework in technology based teaching and learning and argue for or against the use of digital technology in the early, early years. This is um, because we want you to reflect on technology. You know, how is it benefiting our students? Um, you know, we're living in a world that has advanced to such an extent that not using technology will uh, not um, will be detrimental to the development of the future generation. OK, so before we start, um, I would just like to uh, talk about the previous learning units were about teaching technology as a subject. So this learning unit specifically deals with digital technology, which is also known as ICT in the early years of a person's life. So technology and uh, and now we are referring to digital technology. So in this age, um, it's, it's everywhere and it's changing the way we love, the way we work, the way we play. So this means that the new knowledge and skills needed to meet the demands, you know, of living in the 21st century and through the fourth industrial revolution. So as a future teacher, you need to find innovative ways of teaching, which include digital technology. So this learning unit will basically help you understand the the uh, the era the uh, era in which we are living, which is known as the fourth industrial revolution, and it will also help you develop an understanding of the concepts of digital technology and digital literacy, and it contains some examples of technological resources for the foundation phase as well. So while you study this unit, you will investigate some of the skills that are needed for the 21st century, and finally you will also learn about the TPEC framework, which is a useful tool for understanding the elements in involved in teaching and learning uh, with technology. So now we're looking at what is the fourth industrial revolution? So remember, um, uh, various labels and definitions are used to describe innovations of today, you know, uh, especially today's new uh, socioeconomic era, such as the digital uh, age. So the, the fourth industrial revolution, the internet of things, you know, basically of everything, or the industrial internet. So in the last few years, the idea of the fourth industrial revolution has been suggested uh, by the World Economic Forum to refer to the drastic and exhilarating development of technologies and the impact on society at large. Um, so basically, this is very important that you understand this term uh, because this is uh, what you as a teacher are going to deal with. You know, technology is everywhere. Our students were born into technology, um, unlike uh, students from before. Um, so also you need to understand what has digital childhood referred to, what is digital literacy, what do you understand by digital tools, and what is the 21st century skills. So remember, we stand on a brick of uh, technology revolution that will fundamentally alter the way we love, the way we work, the way we relate to each other. Um, so in its scale, in its scope and complexity, the transformation will be unlike anything humankind has ever experienced before. You know, I have um, parents who who can uh, work with uh, with a lot of technology. Maybe they work well with their phones, but when it comes to laptops and uh, you know gadgets uh, or getting onto Netflix, things like that, it it's a daunting task for or the older generation. So we do not yet know just how it will unfold. But one thing is clear, the response to it must be integrated and comprehensive, involving all stakeholders, you know, um, from public to private sectors. Uh, it's basically going to take over the world. So according to the uh, World Economic Forum, the 4IR has been process, uh, progressing since the start of the 21st century, you know. It's a revolutionary change characterized by Mobile internet, cheaper things are getting cheaper, smaller, stronger uh, sensors. You know, um, 
so this is how um, things are adapting to basically human needs and to the corporate social responsibility. Um, so if you look at the, the the development that's currently happening, it's 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 basically the, this age of uh, global connections. Um, you have the power to transform the entire systems of production, of management, of governance. So throughout the history, technology has generated a promise of revolutionary, uh, you know, a revolutionary society and a revolutionary change in education um, by uh, by technological advances. As we could see with the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, most of the schools were, um, were trying to, uh, you know, uh, teach and learn online. Uh, some of the private schools were, were very, um, were very successful in this, uh, but obviously not all schools um, had the necessary resources and the knowledge and skills to do this successfully. So the future promises more of the same technological progression, you know. Um, and furthermore, we also need to um, understand that individuals view the world differently now, you know. So we need to examine a foundation phase learners right now and make sense of their world and how they fit in or stand out from others in respect to, um, you know, the way in which people were taught before. So we we in this emergent stage where we can start to see the development and application of technologies and the best approach, we need to find out the best approach to follow in responding to this revolution in technology and how to adopt a methodology of design uh, thinking, particularly one that focuses on developing and exploiting the technologies that are people centered. Um, so this is very important that you um, that you understand and that you're able to incorporate um, your application or examples, uh, you know, following these type of uh, concepts. Um, so this is where I created some questions where you can, uh, you know, um, basically try to get yourself to understand what is the what is the fourth industrial revolution in a broader light, you know, as I went through now. Um, so it's it's very important that you uh, work with your study guide on learning unit five. I think it's page 119 and 120 on my side. Uh, like I said, when you on um, you know online, it may the pages may differ. So you will list labels and definitions used to describe the innovation of today's new socioeconomic era. What is the idea of the fourth industrial revolution? And also who wrote the underlying paper for the annual meeting of the WEF in 2016? Um, so remember, you'll see the clause uh, Swab, the founder and exec executive chairman uh, wrote this underlying. So you'll, you'll get all of this information in your study guide. And then what is the profile um, in this paper? What what uh, does um, technology, basically it, it profiles what he calls the fourth industrial revolution. So you also know, you need to know what does the technological revolution alter? Remember, it basically alters um, the way we love, the way we work, it's changing, everything's changing. So how, how should we respond to the technological revolution? Um, think of it as a future teacher. How would you respond? How, what would you do? How would you uh, integrate technology into your classroom? And this is where you can describe the 4IR, um, you know, and what does the in, uh, industry 4.0 include and explain the age of global connections described by um, the author Peter, 2017. And also what does technology promise? And reflect on uh, different authors uh, that were added um, in this learning unit as well. So throughout history, technology has generated the promise of a revolutionary society and a revolutionary change in education by virtue of technological advances, as I indicated before. So we look at, um, you look at this uh, figure um, 5.1, uh, this is the industry 4.0 and how things have, um, you know, basically uh, transformed. Uh, this is the fourth industrial revolution um, figure that you can just, uh, you know, with just glance at so that you have an idea of what this entails as well. Okay, so let's look at digital technology and digital uh, childhood. So um, it's uh, very important that you reflect on, uh, you know, reflect on the devices that you currently have. You know, what do you use these devices for? How do you use these devices? What skills do you need? You know, how do they make your life easier? 
It's always uh, good to also instill this in our learners that they reflect and understand the technology is, uh, you know, um, is there to maybe assist with certain human needs. But also we also need to uh, make them aware that we need to use it wisely and responsibly, as we've noted in the previous unit. So this is also questions that I've generated so that you can ask yourself questions while going through um, this um, basically this uh, this uh, section. So you may have mentioned that uh, you use technology on a personal level, you know, to share ideas, to communicate with friends and family through WhatsApp, or to make purchases, to apply for jobs, to search for information. So technology is also prevalent in the professional or business world. Uh, so it is used to create new ideas, services, and products to collaborate globally, to communicate and to market and manage businesses. So while technology has made a substantial impact on uh, life in general and mainstream business, most educational systems operate uh, much as uh, they did a, a, at the beginning of the 20th century. So think about the answer you gave regarding the different devices you own. And it will be clear that technology, specifically electronic technology, is transforming the ways in which people work and love and play. So the world is connected and basically borderless, you know, and learning can happen when, wherever and whenever. This, this was uh, prevalent during the COVID-19 pandemic, where students were, um, you know, um, uh, not allowed to come to school due to the lockdown period and they were allowed to they basically could continue learning at home um, through teams classes or, or zoom classes or whatever the specific school decided upon during that time so connectivity infrastructure and cheaper computers are becoming more common you know school systems around the world are developing the ability to provide learning opportunities to learners anytime anywhere so several terms are used when digital technology uh, in education is discussed. So a common term is used in information and communication technology. You know, where Crawford um, 1997 defines ICT as an international network in which contribution of knowledge and ideas is shared in order to connect people by using communication such as cell phones and computers. So in this unit, um, you know, we will use the term digital technology because this is what refers to technological tools such as the internet, you know, the devices, the applications, the social networking and the like that teachers use for teaching and learning and learn basically learners use for learning. So technology as a tool is the basis for teaching and learning, you know, in the foundation phase. Uh, we will note uh, many schools were unable to, uh, you know, um, teach, uh, um, you know, with uh, with with different uh, online uh, methods because they were unable to, you know, they didn't have the resources. They were unable to uh, supply resources maybe to the teachers and learners were, you know, maybe from rural areas or, you know, um, were not. Um, given or do not have those uh, those type of resources that can help them, um, you know, to learn online. So it became a, um, a digital divide where some were taught during this time and some were basically just at home and were unable to communicate with the school due to this barrier. Um, I, unfortunately, this was the reality that a lot of schools experienced um and i think uh, there's a lot of research that needs to go into this so that we can improve on this you know for future cases you know like uh, like the covid-19 pandemic has hit hit the world so unexpectedly so this is something that uh, the education system need to work on so that if any uh, um disruptions had to happen in future or to continue technology um education in schools currently so that if something knocks um, at our door, you know, in future, we are a bit more prepared. So you will understand what this means when we look at the TPEC framework later in this unit. So let us uh, briefly also look at this generational theory, you know, which proposes that the era in which uh, a person is born affects how he or she uh, basically views uh, the world. So think about it. Our value systems are shaped in the first decade of our lives. So by our families, our friends, our communities, uh, you know, events that we attend, the general era, um, era in which we're born. So all people have values, expectations and attitude of, you know, uh, based on what life is like when they grow up. So moreover, and uh, very basically, the idea behind generation theory is not to pour everyone into a mold, rather your age, the generation is an attitude. 
So basically, um, you know, previously I could do without Wi-Fi because it wasn't something I was exposed to. Uh, but now that Wi-Fi is, um, you know, something um, that we used to, we so dependent on it that when we don't have it, it, it feels like, uh, you know, life has stopped or whatever the case may be. So it, it, as the technology, um, you know, advances, it becomes, we become more and more dependent on it and we base our life's expectations on things like this. So this is a generation terminology. You know, children are born, in, born into the current generation known as the generation alpha. They never knew a world without screens. Think about it, you know, if uh, if you have kids at the moment, you know, they basically on the iPads, uh, sometimes just to keep them busy, we we, we, we try not to give them the these um these type of technologies early on, but it just ends up being this case. It's a real challenge uh, for parents, uh, you know, to keep uh, kids away from technology, even though they, they're so young. So you get your baby boomers, your Generation X, your Generation Y, Generation Z, and the Generation Alpha. So you can see how things have progressed, you know, um, how um, I think with the Generation X, this is where... Um, Cable TV and video games, uh, you know, were were used, and then um, and then as it went to the alpha generation, now it's uh, our our children are basically the Google kids, you know, born into a world newly emerging from widespread economic slowdown and expected to be more te technology uh, based, uh, um, have more technology based education, and they more of a materialistic they and basically materialistic than previous generations so children born born into the current generation um you know uh, basically from the moment they could see screens were all around them so much more so than even children who are a decade older so screens took photo uh, screens took photos of them from the second they were born screens were placed in front of them as a babysitting device Screens were used at home and at school for entertainment and as education. So at every turn, there has been a screen and they know innately how to interact with it. You know, I have um, a son and uh, daughter who are more technologically advanced than me. You know, certain things, uh, they, they're quite small, but I still, I'm still learning from them because uh, they pick up so fast. Uh, you know, in many cases, children are immersed in these experiences with digital technology before their formal schooling years, and they come to school equipped with, you know, a, and already developing a range of skills and experiences. So I want you to think about technology that came into being when you were a child. What impact did it have on your childhood? And did it have an impact on education, you know, your general education? How did it influence your learning? So these are things that you need to ask yourself. And also, remember computers, for example, may have influenced your childhood. So uh, computers may have not influenced your education as a young child, but many developments occurred in respect of computers in your early childhood until the time you left school. So in that time, you may have, um, without actually realizing it, gone from knowing how to use a computer to use one for learning. So this brings us to the next point. Technologies are not new. Even though we think digital uh, technology is new, it is important to remember that technologies have always been created and therefore all generations have had a technology that influenced their specific area. Um, you know, so at this point, it is important that we understand the term digital childhood. Uh, remember, um, a prominent researcher in the field of digital technology in the UK makes the following observations of digital uh, childhood uh, that the definitions of digital resources are fruitless because the evolution of these resources are so fast paced uh, for such a definition to be meaningful. So we, we need to focus on childhood. Remember, um, in this digital area uh, was just was was just another period in history. So there's a shift in the way children experience the world and how children interact with physical, social and cultural spaces in the contemporary society and how learning and play has tra uh, trans um, are basically transforming um, and how dynamic uh, the context has become. So instead of trying to define what digital resources are, we should also look at them from a viewpoint of digital childhood, you know, which is a context in which children are loving, learning and experiencing. So what do these terms, digital ch uh, technology and digital childhood uh, mean for you as a teacher? You know, you need to reflect on this. Living in an era um, characterized by constantly emerging technology. So these definitions and the rest of this unit will hopefully give you some understanding of what it means to teach, you know, currently um, with uh, these digital uh, 
digitally literate children and how you can use digital technology in your teaching. So let's think about digital literacy and the 21st century skills. So again, I've created these questions just so that while you are going through this learning unit, you're able to ask yourself uh, certain things, reflect on the content. Remember, uh, this is a, a final year module and we're expecting you to um, apply your knowledge and to be able to understand concepts and show your understanding, you know, taking uh, things directly from the study guide and plugging it into an exam or assignment is not uh, going to award you any marks. You may find yourself uh, getting zero for something that you feel is correct because you're showing no understanding, no uh, reflection on the content. So as mentioned earlier in this unit, learning can happen anywhere and in any time. So the ability to find evaluate, create, and share information using electronic devices and the internet is therefore important in this 21st century. Uh, the 21st century skills are often defined as flexible problem solving, you know, in terms of communication and collaboration, intrapersonal skills of self-management, time management, self-regulation, and adaptability. Uh, you know, uh, you need to be process-oriented skills like teamwork and flexibility. So according to um, different authors, like according to Brooks Young, 2007, mastering these skills is, is the first step towards learning how to make effective use of technology as a tool of teaching and learning. So in attempt to define digital uh, literacy, um, posit, it, uh, Belcher posits that although unclear, digital literacy is simply a set of basic skills, you know, in a digital world. In this module, the term digital literacy refers to the capabilities that an individual possesses to teach or to learn in a digital age. So uh, the, these other authors, Griffin, Key, and uh, Mako, that I, 2012, that argue that many countries are moving from an industrial-based economy to an information-based economy, and that education systems must respond to this change. So like the COVID-19 pandemic, we education systems needs to respond to the change, you know, from um, traditional learning to remote learning. So in the in this industrial age, there was a strong focus on the development, uh, distribution, and consumption of products, and employment was classi uh, classified accordingly. So since then, the focus has shifted to classifying employment in terms of the development, you know, distribution and consumption of information. So educational outcomes therefore need to be adapted to meet the demands of new ways of working, of thinking, of learning, and living. So in addition. Um, Lorelad, uh, uh, 2009, argued that what and how students learn have been affected by the role of education and how it's being prepared for individuals for work. You know, it's observing that young children construct stories and castles to play and artwork together and establish and cultivate their abilities, you know, to think creatively, exactly the skills needed to accomplish, uh, you know, being in the 21st century. Uh, so you need, they need you need to also understand the 21st century uh, skills that are developed by the 21st century learning in 20, 2007. This framework includes learner outcomes such as the four C's. The four C's would be critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. Life and career skills. So the key subjects and the information, media, and technology skills. The framework also accounts for various support systems, you know, such as standards and assessment, the curriculum and instruction. Um, professional development and learning environment. So all components of this framework are interconnected in the process of 21st century teaching and learning. So um, P20, uh, this basically advocates for integration of the 21st century skills, which includes critical thinking, collaboration, communication, creativity, technological literacy, and social emotional development. So this is in the early learning experiences for young children that allows them to basically develop these skills. Uh, they need not only uh, um, not only when they enter school, school, but also in other aspects of life. Remember, in 2017, uh, these uh, 21st century skills developed a framework, you know, um, for learning in early childhood. So the framework provides adults who work with young children with practical guidance, you know, including specific examples of the 21st century skills and knowledge in relation to early learners. Um, so basically creativity and innovation, critical thinking and problem solving go together, communication and collaboration, flexibility and adaptability, initiative and self-direction, social and cross-cultural skills, productivity and accountability, 
leadership and responsibility and information and media literacy. So this is important for you to understand so that um, you know you pay attention to the various outcomes and the definitions as uh, as well as the charts of skills and outcomes so in early learning. So you may have noticed that the skills and outcomes fit well with science and technology and specifically the process skills and problem solving nature of various um, learning areas. Um, so this is also very important that you understand and that you're able to, uh, you know, reflect and, you know, there'll be a lot of reflection questions in terms of digital technology and you need to be able to understand these concepts and be able to, um, you know, show that understanding so that uh, it can be incorporated into your, your you know, uh, your daily planning of lessons when in terms of your thoughts on technology and does it actually benefit your learners. Uh, in the learning, um, in this learning unit, you will see that uh, there is a section where digital resources for foundation phase is added. Um, this is where you can visit certain links and also research your own links where you can, um, you know, um, get different uh, resources that can assist you to bring technology into your classroom and to get your students to benefit uh, from it as um, a generation that was born into technology. The TPEC framework is also a very important um, section that needs to be understood because uh, if you look at the questions that I've derived here, it's basically just giving you, you know, a good understanding of what is expected, where you need to understand it thoroughly, you know, um, the concept, you know, uh, in terms of the areas that need to be uh, considered, you know, whether it's technological education, content knowledge, uh, technological content knowledge is a vast a variety. There's also a figure um, 5.2 where you can uh, understand the conceptualization of the TPEC framework um, in, uh, so that you are more understanding of the importance of understanding effective teaching with technology, you know, within the context of technological environment that you will find yourself in. So remember, the reason uh, why we brought this framework to your attention is to guide you on how to use digital technology, you know, when you, te when you teach young learners. And successful teaching is not just about using new digital tools. You must also consider what are you teaching with the aid of digital tools? How would you use these tools? Uh, you should ask yourself the following questions with respect to each component of the TPEC. Um, so technological knowledge, so with what do foundation phase learners learn and foundation phase uh, teachers teach, um, you know, and then also you look at um, um, the other types of knowledge, you know, uh, where, uh, how do foundation phase teachers use technology to teach and uh, when it comes to content knowledge, uh, what do you, what do I need to know to be able to teach? Like, what are the learners supposed to learn? How will technology help me uh, find, gather and become up to date with content for teaching and learning in the foundation phase? So think of an activity that you would do with learners using digital technology and now consider the TPEC framework described. You know, reflect on whether you, or not you included all the components of the TPEC when you decided on the activity. You can see that on page 126 and 127. Um, and in this activity, you should have chosen a specific activity using digital technology. For example, what, did you use a tablet? Did you watch a video? And thereafter, you should also have reviewed the TPEC framework and checked whether you had given a thought to every component in the planning of the activity. So if you gave attention to a specific type of knowledge, why did you do this? If you left out a specific type of knowledge, why? And uh, you know, what can you do to pay attention to it in planning activities in the future to incorporate technology in the best way possible so that it benefits our, um, you know, foundation phase learners? OK, so this ba basically brings us um, uh, to uh, this last section, which is your TPEC framework. And this is what I was talking about uh, just a minute ago. Uh, where you need to uh, consider, you know, what to do with your foundation phase uh, learners in terms of technology and also what content are learners supposed to learn and how will technology help you, you know, um, gather. And, you know, because sometimes you need to uh, play a video for your students in the classroom so they can have a bit more insight on the topic and be able to basically, uh, you know, maybe answer questions after watching a video. We want to keep that excitement that and, and 
be creative in the classroom so that our foundation phase students are very well aware of um, you know a broader light of the topic and uh, you know be able to make you know the concept development that we spoke about before i would like you to work on this where uh, you need to read this uh, learning units and try to apply the content work on the activities work on the self evaluation questions uh, you know refer to any additional resources that you can find or what is uh, what the links that are uh, added on the uh, in the study guide which will help you get a broader understanding so that you can show your understanding in the examination you know you're not uh, just um, confined to what is written to the study guide, but you have more knowledge and, you know, more examples to portray when when asked to do so. OK, so that brings us to the end of this presentation. In this learning unit, you were basically introduced to the concepts of digital technology and digital literacy and the use of digital technologies in the early years. So you also learned about the skills that are necessary for the 21st century and the elements of the TPEC framework in relation to technology based teaching and learning. So as a final thought, consider this quote. Technology will never replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers is transformational. So remember, it's up to you as um, new teachers, uh, you know, to uh, to to consider technology in your classroom, uh, bearing in mind that we have uh, students that were born into this technological, um, you know, uh, era. And we also want them to basically, um, you know, uh, be able to be to be able to use technology, you know, wisely and responsibly. And uh, they basically learn this in the classroom and, you know, and then they can use it for researching for, for a lot of things that can give them a broader understanding of life in general. And also this is where the, um, you know, the careers are going. Everything is digitalized. So uh, we want them to be equipped with the necessary knowledge and skills that will uh, lead them to be successful citizens and, you know, working, um, working people in our society. All the best. I hope that uh, this learning unit makes sense to you and that you are able to um, understand it and be able to apply the knowledge uh, in your assignments, in your exams. And please note that this is not sufficient to um, to study with. You need to do the activities and reflect and, uh, you know, work on the learning unit itself to be able to understand it in a broader light and that you can apply your content. Thank you again. All the best.